Welcome to Believers Mandate. Please like our videos, share, and subscribe. Thank you, and God bless you. The second sign of the church is the rise of false prophets. Matthew 24, verse 10 and 11. He said, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Go to verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So it is false prophets that will bring the delusion into the church. And let me tell you something. When we talk about false prophets, it's not about ministers who bear the title of prophet. Because many people think it's those who say they are prophet A or prophet B that we will censor and choose the ones who are genuine and choose the ones who are fake. It's not about title. Anybody who preaches or leaves deception as a minister is a false prophet. Because this credential that the Bible gave there is that it said this false prophet, their job is to deceive many. So you can call yourself an apostle if there is no truth in your mouth. And if your life is fake, you are a false prophet. There are many people today who are exaggerating a lot of things that God is not saying or doing on the altar they say they are apostles they are also false prophets false prophets are not only the ones who carry the title of prophets there are many people today they are preaching what they are not practicing they are also false prophets hope you know that one of the greatest corruption that entered the church is the gospel of materialism many people call it the gospel of prosperity but it's not true because prosperity is not wrong prosperity is actually holistic prosperity is spirit spirit prosperity is when you are you are drawing close to god living under god's ordinances holiness is actually spirit prosperity a state where you are dominated by god and you are not under any demonic influence soulish prosperity is a situation where you are mentally doing well you are sound and your mind can be used of god to serve his purpose bodily prosperity is divine health and material prosperity is a state where God can entrust you with finances for his kingdom. So there's nothing wrong with prosperity. It is materialism and self-preservation that they brought into the church. And so if you find anybody teaching materialism or self-preservation, he's a false prophet. What is materialism? Everything you do is about God blessing you with something. If you are praying, it's about money. It's about good health. It's about preservation of your family. It's about breakthrough. It's about promotion. Every engagement you have with God is not about God. It's not about your growth. It's about using God to meet a material need. That is what we call materialism. And when you get that material need, you begin to live in vanity. You showcase it. So you see them carry cars. They are showcasing cars. You see them carry planes. They are showcasing planes. There's nothing wrong in having a private jet for missions. But when you buy a private jet and all they sit inside is gold and you sit down to show people that you are doing well, that's vanity. That's materialism. And so when you quote a private jet, better define what you are saying. If it is for mission, it is well, it is welcome. But if it is something that boosts your ego and makes you feel important, that's materialism. And if every engagement you carry out with God is to give you one material thing or the other, that's not the gospel of the kingdom. That's materiality. And then secondly, any message that is preached that is all about you and your benefit is called self-preservation. Do you know the people who brought this to the church? It's the apostles. Those kinds of apostles are also called false prophets. This is the corruption that came to Africa from the Western world. Fasting became about blessing. Prayer became about blessing. Give, it shall be given unto you. Everything is about you and you and you and you alone. There's nothing about God's kingdom. Somebody is looking for breakthrough. God gives him a million. The kingdom is not advanced. That one million becomes something that makes for self-aggrandizement. That is self. If you find people who advocate this or preach it, they are called false prophets and this is why many will fall away because the moment god is no longer meeting their material need they don't need god anymore they look for another god 
Because as far as they are concerned, the reason they are coming to God is not because of God, it's because of their needs. And so the third sign is that the gospel of the kingdom must be preached as a witness in all the wars. Matthew 24, 14. The gospel of the kingdom has three major categories. Number one is self-denial. If you have not denied self, you cannot participate in God's kingdom. After you are born again and you are given the right to perceive the kingdom, the first thing the kingdom will put on you is to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow. Because if you don't deny yourself, if you don't take up your cross, you cannot follow. And if you cannot follow, you cannot be sent. And so God is looking for those who will follow him. But those who will follow him are those who will deny themselves and take their cross. Matthew 16, 24. If you will follow me, you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross and you must follow. So the first thing about the kingdom is self-denial. That's why you hear us saying it again and again and again. Except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It abides alone. After self-denial, then you come into the government of life. The Bible said that now there is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He said for the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus have set me free from the law of sin and death. It is when you are set free from the law of sin and death that you become a son. It is the people that are walking by the law of the spirit of life that the Bible spoke about in verse 19. That the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. He wasn't talking about those who are born again. It's those who are born again who now walk by the law of the spirit of life. Now, if you don't do anything by the empowerment of life in the kingdom, it's called dead works. And if it is dead works, God will not know it. Are you seeing that now? So any man who is walking in the kingdom is powered by the life of God. Is powered by the grace of God. In Hebrews 12, 28, it says, Having received the kingdom that cannot be moved, it says, Let us receive grace to serve God acceptably. So you must come under the government of life before God can deploy you to represent him. And so after self-denial, you begin to walk by the dictates of life. This is why we teach people prayer. This is why we talk fasting. This is why we meditate on scripture. So that you can harness your divine possibilities. This does not mean God will overlook all your natural ability. But the way God works is that if you come under life, it is God that now breathes on your natural ability. At that point, even you will know that you have a treasure but in earthen vessel. You will no longer glorify yourself in your natural ability rather you submit your natural ability to the government of life